This is William K. Mert, Tom Mert, Witness One. And today, on my mobile phone, I would like to discuss the musings of a dead guy. Now, who is this dead guy I'm speaking of? Well, it's none other than Timothy Charles Holmeseth. Uh, today is the exact day that it was known that he made his last live appearance on the internet. He did it on a Facebook chat. And it was generally just the usual Tim Holmeseth. Ever since that day, however, nothing has been heard from Timothy Holmeseth that can be verifiable. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean there has been no blog entry that can be verified to be from Tim Holmeseth currently. There have been no videos on any social media, YouTube, or any other social media outlet where Tim Holmeseth has made anything even resembling a current topic. Instead, the postings by the so-called Tim Holmeseth have been repeats of old stuff. Stuff going back 10 years to the Haley Cummings case, which it seems to be the only thing that Tim Holmeseth is interested in. The other stuff he talks about that may be considered current news to some extent is a throwback to that case. And the one lawyer that he's constantly defaming in his efforts. You know, so uh, you know, I bring up the fact that it's my personal belief, and I am not kidding, that Tim Holmeseth is either dead or incapacitated in some way to where he is unable to get on the internet. Now, all this talk out there about Tim Holmeseth being on assignment is ridiculous and false. Because Tim is just like me and just like everybody else. He's just a guy who has access to the internet or did have access to the internet. And he has that access to some fairly powerful tools by which he can manipulate text, manipulate videos, manipulate audio, and have spell checks and autocorrects and other stuff that makes it to where he can do a reasonably good job of writing. You know, no one disputes that Tim Holmeseth was a good writer. I mean, you know, it doesn't take a professorship to be able to coherently write English on the Internet. Uh, you know, doing good at high school English and creative writing is enough for that. But the problem with writing is you can't prove that it's you or you're alive. Somebody can write under your name, especially when they own their blog. And this is the case with TimothyCharlesHomeset.com. Timothy doesn't own the blog. It's owned by somebody else. That person made that abundantly clear in a letter to YouTube. And this particular individual has been Tim Holmes says handler for several years. Um, there's an indication this goes back about four years. So any credit that's given to Tim Holmes says for any anything actually goes to his handler because it's not Tim Holmeseth doing all this stuff. It's his handler. You know, Tim Holmeseth goes hitchhiking across the country, takes a picture of a tree full of sneakers, and all of a sudden we have this big conspiracy theory involving shoe trees, which everyone who lives in the region already knows the story of the shoe trees. It has nothing to do with kidnapped children or trafficking or 
kids in caves or mole people or fish people or anything like that. It's just one of those weird things people do. They throw shoes into trees. In the city, they throw them up on telephone wires or, you know, power lines, telephone pole wires, all that stuff. Because it's, you know, some say it's a gang thing or, you know, territorial markers or some such thing. Or it's a remembered of a person that passed away. Or There's all kinds of theories about why people throw these things and into trees. Or maybe somebody just felt like throwing a pair of sneakers up into a tree. Who knows? But it's not what Tim Holmes said, says it is. And it was debunked. But he continues to have this stuff on his blog, probably by his handler, since Tim Holmes says it's not alive to put anything anywhere. Now, a curious thing always happens every Friday on my Murdathon, and it happened again last night. Task Force comes into my blog, or into my live stream. And, as usual, Task Force did it last night, attacking my guest, which we both figured she would, and we had fun for it with her for a little while until I finally decided enough is enough and I banned Task Force from the chat. Now this is all the Task Force is capable of, or other, than, other than putting up these wild and ridiculous uh, conspiracy theories on Twitter, and on YouTube, to some extent, there's nothing else for the task force to do. The task force cannot go live on any social media because there would be a face to the Twitter account. And the same goes for the high command, which is operated by the same person. I've had people tell me, you see, oh no, one is operated by Tim, Tim's handler, and the other is operated by Tim himself. And that is blatantly false, because if one was operated by Tim Holmseth, he would be sure to get current content out there. Because if Tim Holmseth can put content on Twitter and have it go up into YouTube, he could do the same thing with his face being out there with something current. Even if he records it. Because it would be current. It would be something in the news that's current. But he doesn't do that. He puts up old stuff. Stuff that he's recorded before. Stuff that can be traced back to old original recordings. It's nothing new. So in that respect, we know that it is clear that Tim Holmseth is clearly not among the living. And that's my contention for today. That we have a dead guy musing over the past and using social, secure, uh, social media as a head game. He's the ghost of Randy, I guess you could say. Because it is his handler and maybe a couple of his fans that are behind anything that goes on on the Twitter accounts that are attributed to Mr. Holmseth. Mr. Holmseth is dead. Mr. Holmseth is incapacitated. He's either tied to a cinder block in one of the thousand lakes in Minnesota or he's fertilizer in a cornfield somewhere in Minnesota or elsewhere. And I am going to continue to make that contention until there is a proof of life. And of course, there's not going to be. Because once there's a proof of life, then we all know that some fraud has been perpetrated on social media. The only other explanation for Tim being in isolation and not dead is the fact that there are more than likely a federal investigation against him for a number of very serious crimes. And once these 
crimes are thoroughly investigated and it goes to a grand jury or to a state uh, federal attorney and it's decided that Tim Holmseth is going to get prosecuted, then we are going to have felony indictments going out. And once the felony indictments go out, Tim Holmseth would not be safe in the United States. He would have to leave the country. And unfortunately, he cannot because the Canadian border is closed to Americans. And if he did have a federal indictment, he could always be extradited back to the United States anyway. So running to Canada would not be a wise choice. Plus, it's rather expensive to live up there, and it's rather cold. Even colder than Minnesota which is pretty darn cold right now. I can attest to that. And so, Tim Holmseth, dead or alive, is forced to be off social media. And thus the speculation is going to remain as to whether he is dead or alive. That is something everybody needs to take into consideration. Please like, subscribe, share. I'm trying to get up over a thousand subscribers so that I can expand what I will be doing with this channel. And there will be more of these recorded mobile signs as topics of interest by me and in some cases by others come up. Until then, this is William K. Murtaugh, Mert Witness 1. Have a good one.